The movie kicks off with a high school student named Tommy Riley, who, due to circumstances, has to relocate to live with his father for a fresh start. However, their new residence is situated in a rough neighborhood infested with various gangs. Upon his first day at the new school, a clique of local teens attempts to intimidate him. To make matters worse, Tommy discovers that three of his tormentors are in the same class as him. Being the new kid, Tommy opts not to stir trouble with these troublemakers and complies when they demand he change seats multiple times. His patience wears thin when they insist on a fourth relocation. Defying their orders, Tommy stays put, provoking their ire. Fortunately, the teacher arrives just in time to prevent a potential altercation. Despite threats of retaliation during recess, Tommy manages to avoid confrontation thanks to the intervention of another gang. Gang rivalry is rife within the school, often resulting in skirmishes like the one witnessed today, where rival leaders engage in a one-on-one -on -one duel, with one resorting to wielding sharp weapons. Because the teachers intervened, the duel had to be cut short without a clear winner. On top of the school issues, Tommy also had to contend with debt collectors upon returning home. The family had to relocate due to his father's substantial gambling debts following his mother's passing. Now, owing to his father's troubles, Tommy finds himself facing two armed debt collectors at their doorstep. Fortunately, they didn't inflict any harm, merely warning him about the overdue debt his father owed for the past two weeks. Later that night, Tommy's sleep is disrupted by his father's return. Surprisingly, his father displays kindness by inquiring about Tommy's first day at the new school. Opting to conceal the truth, Tommy reassures his father that everything is fine. However, his father senses something amiss, prompting Tommy to divulge the visit from the debt collectors earlier that day, leaving his father crestfallen. Realizing the magnitude of his mistake, his father vows to rectify their situation. He secures a new job in another city with better pay, intending to settle their debts and improve their financial standing. Meanwhile, Tommy doesn't mind the prospect of living independently for a while, considering himself capable as an adult. To alleviate his father's financial strain, he opted to take up a job as a dishwasher at a local diner owned by a fellow student's parents. However, one evening, the troublemakers from his school showed up at the diner, intent on picking up where they left off upon seeing Tommy working there. Initially, Tommy tried to ignore their taunts, but when they pushed him down and mocked him, he reached his breaking point. Reacting swiftly, he fought back, managing to subdue two of them. Just as he was about to confront the third, an unfamiliar elderly man intervened, halting the altercation. It turned out the man was Jack, a local boxing promoter who admired Tommy's fighting skills and proposed an opportunity to participate in an illegal underground boxing match. Initially offering $600, Tommy declined, requesting $1,250 instead. After intense negotiations, Jack eventually acquiesced to Tommy's terms, sealing the deal in front of Dawn, the diner owner's daughter. The following night, Tommy headed to the illicit fighting venue, where Jack introduced him to Noah, his designated trainer and caretaker during his stay. One of Noah's initial pieces of advice was to treat the upcoming match like a battlefield. In the ring, fairness doesn't matter since nobody cares about it. Besides, Tommy will face Black Death, a fighter known for his dirty tactics. Surprisingly, Tommy encounters his classmate Romano, who warns him to watch out for Black Death's sneaky moves, especially targeting his right hand. Following Romano's advice, Tommy steps into the ring. The spectators heavily favor Black Death, cheering wildly as he enters the arena. Noah's warning proves accurate as Black Death immediately resorts to dirty tactics, elbowing Tommy and causing him to bleed from the temples. The referee turns a blind eye to the foul play, as such tactics are accepted in this boxing environment. Despite Black Death's dirty tricks, Tommy perseveres, eventually overwhelming his opponent with a relentless assault, ultimately knocking him down. Tommy's unexpected victory leaves the audience, bettors, and investors astonished. As Tommy raises his hands in triumph, the crowd erupts in jubilation. The following day, Tommy is summoned to meet Mr. Horn, Jack's superior, for payment. Impressed by Tommy's performance, Horn offers him further opportunities to fight for him. However, Tommy declines, insisting on his initial demand of $1,250. As the day goes on, 
he encounters Dawn, who openly expresses her disappointment upon learning that Tommy has opted to become an underground fighter. However, she breathes a sigh of relief upon discovering that he has only fought in the ring once and has no intention of pursuing it further. However, everything changes when Jack invites Tommy to meet Horn again later in the afternoon. After some small talk, Horn reveals that the two debt collectors who visited Tommy's house were under his employ. To make matters worse, Tommy's father has resumed gambling and now owes $15,000 in debt. Horn proposes a solution for Tommy to easily settle his father's debt by becoming his fighter in a few matches. Predictably, Tommy agrees to the offer to alleviate his father's debt burden. On his way home from Horn's place, Tommy stumbles upon his schoolmate Lincoln being attacked by gang members. He intervenes to help, but outnumbered, they are forced to flee from the pursuing gang. After evading their pursuers, Tommy and Lincoln converse, with Lincoln revealing that despite his young age, he is already married with children and has turned to illegal boxing to support his family, much like Tommy. Later that night, Tommy attends Lincoln's fight, where his friend initially struggles against a larger opponent but eventually emerges victorious. At this point, Tommy's curiosity about Horn reaches its peak. After witnessing Lincoln's match, he heads to Noah's place and inquires about Horn's background. It turns out that Horn used to be a boxer himself, even holding the world heavyweight title. What's more astonishing is that he only suffered one defeat throughout his boxing career. He swiftly sought revenge in a rematch, causing his opponent a permanent injury. However, his boxing career ended due to a leg injury, despite undergoing numerous surgeries. By the time his leg healed, he was past his prime for boxing, so he transitioned into a promoter to avoid further injury. Several days later, Don visited Tommy during his training sessions, concerned about his recent absence from school. Tommy opened up about his family's troubles, which compelled him to return to illegal boxing. Fortunately, Don empathized with his situation, and they grew closer, even starting a romantic relationship. Tommy's life improved significantly after entering the underground boxing scene. Don became a constant companion, and he formed close bonds with Romano and Lincoln, with whom he trained and socialized daily. However, tragedy struck during one match when Romano faced Shortcut, a supposedly lesser opponent. Despite dominating the fight, Shortcut resorted to foul play by applying a mysterious substance to his gloves, attempting to incapacitate Romano by choking him with it during the fifth round. As soon as Romano released the clutch, his vision immediately blurred, impairing his ability to fight effectively. Seizing the opportunity, Shortcut mercilessly attacked him, even relishing in the torment he inflicted on his opponent. Tommy, witnessing the brutality from the ringside, couldn't bear to watch any longer. Seeing that the referee showed no signs of stopping the fight, he rushed to the bell and rang it, forcing an end to the match. However, by that point, Romano was already unconscious in the corner of the ring. Upon returning home, Tommy received a call from his father, who strangely acted as if nothing was amiss. Despite this, he informed Tommy of a delay in his return due to unfinished business. The following day, Tommy visited Romano in the hospital, only to find his friend still unconscious. Tragically, doctors declared him brain dead. Determined to avenge Romano, Tommy awaited his chance for retribution, which came when he faced Shortcut in the ring. Once again, Shortcut attempted his deceitful tactic, but Tommy, having noticed his trick during the previous fight with Romano, was prepared. Engaging in a gritty battle, Tommy targeted Shortcut's groin, causing him to writhe in agony before unleashing a relentless barrage of punches. In the end, Tommy emerged victorious in the first round. With Romano gone, Lincoln remained as Tommy's sole close friend. One day, while Lincoln was training, he suddenly felt his body weaken and collapsed inexplicably. It was revealed that the previous week, he had sustained a severe blow to the head, resulting in symptoms of brain damage. As a precaution, he was advised to take a 60-day break from boxing to prevent permanent injury. However, Horn had different plans for Lincoln. That evening, Tommy was perplexed to find his scheduled opponent fighting someone else. Seeking answers, he confronted Horn, who disclosed his scheme. Tommy was to fight Lincoln. Despite Tommy's anger and concern for his friend's well-being, Lincoln was resolute in his decision to fight. 
viewing it as an opportunity to impress Horn and advance to the professional level. Lincoln refused to back down. Tommy attempted to persuade Horn to cancel the match, but his efforts proved futile. As the days passed, the anticipated showdown between Lincoln and Tommy approached. Dawn, Tommy's girlfriend, was eager to witness the event, but Tommy lacked enthusiasm, unlike Lincoln, who was fired up. In the ring, Lincoln aggressively attacked Tommy from the start, while Tommy remained passive, refraining from retaliating even when knocked down. This passive approach infuriated Lincoln and risked forfeiting their payment from Horn, who despised dull matches. The audience shared Tommy's sentiment. Consequently, midway through the second round, Horn issued a threat to Tommy, using Dawn as leverage, warning that he could harm her unless Tommy fought seriously. However, Tommy refrained from striking Lincoln's head, knowing the potential fatality of such an action. Instead, he opted to target Lincoln's body, satisfying Horn and the audience. Tommy attempted to convince Lincoln to end the feudal altercation, emphasizing Horn's disregard for their lives in pursuit of profit. Despite Tommy's pleas, Lincoln persisted in targeting Tommy's head. Realizing the futility of persuasion, Tommy urged Lincoln to unleash his full strength against him, hoping to earn their promised payment from Horn. To Tommy's surprise, Lincoln eventually grasped the truth of his words, acknowledging the senselessness of their confrontation. Choosing to end the bout prematurely, much to the audience's disappointment, Lincoln's decision enraged Horn. Ignoring Lincoln's defiance, Horn entered the ring, demanding Lincoln resume the fight. However, Lincoln refused, declaring his resignation from Horn's employ. Enraged by Lincoln's defiance, Horn struck him forcefully on the head without hesitation, causing Lincoln to be propelled out of the ring. At this point, Tommy realized Horn had crossed a line. He needed a lesson to understand the gravity of his actions. That's why Tommy entered the ring and challenged him to a duel right then and there. If Tommy won, Horn had to clear his father's debt, but if Horn won, Tommy would work for him indefinitely. Horn agreed to this condition, but he added one of his own. They had to fight without gloves. With his background as a former boxing champion, Horn had extensive experience, which initially gave him the upper hand, evident in his early mockery and humiliation of Tommy. However, his arrogance led to his downfall. Although Tommy was young, he was intelligent. He quickly grasped Horn's fighting style and used it against him. Initially, Tommy intentionally allowed Horn to strike his head, breaking one of Horn's fingers. Then, he provoked Horn's anger, as Horn had done to him at the beginning of the match. Observing Horn's reaction, Tommy realized that anger was Horn's vulnerability. Yet, this alone wasn't sufficient to defeat him. So, Tommy pretended that his right arm was broken to catch Horn off guard. When the moment was opportune, he struck Horn in the face, followed by a barrage of 13 punches, knocking him out. With Horn's defeat, Tommy and his father were finally free from debt. The film concludes with Tommy celebrating his victory alongside Lincoln and Dawn. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.